So I've got this really cool Panasonic motor with a ball screw built into it. Um, hook up to my uh, Zenus Compact AC power drive, uh, motor power wires, uh, three phase. Uh, the feedback is uh, absolute. Um, multi turn is a battery. Uh, I've got the stow bypass and a serial port connected. Um, 24 volts with a brake. So the brake prevents you from turning the shaft uh, when, the, when the drive's disabled. Um, you can still adjust the ball screw in your mechanical system, but normally this would be held in place and not allowed to rotate. Um, this, is, this has uh, 200 Newtons of uh, loading in the uh, vertical direction. Um, I'm not going to side load it at all, um, but I do have 40 pounds here, which uh, according to the difference in time from here to here, the gravitational effect makes it uh, 200 Newtons at this elevation. Whoa. Um, anyway, so I've got CME connected and disabled. Uh, I don't have any, any counts, much counts here. Yeah, that's my zero position. I could adjust this down um, for zero mechanically, and then and then hook it up. Uh, I, I don't I don't want to go too far to the bottom because it yeah, there's a the, the recirculating balls uh, kind of run out and there's there's a limit to the the zero position. But so you get the stroke. Um, uh, 145 millimeters length minus the diameter or the, the height of the, the ball. Anyways, we'll take a quick peek at the uh, basic setup here. Brushless rotary, there's a break. It's a Panasonic Absolute A format. Uh, I, I'm not ignoring the battery because I got the battery hooked up. Single turn, 17 bits. Uh, there's really 8192 counts per rev, so single turn bits to ignore was four and then uh, 13 bits of uh, multi-turn so 8192 counts for one rev and then multiple turns 8192 um, that seems to be the configuration that works although there could be variations on that uh, don't ignore the encoder there's some break stop time so if i hardware disable um, i'm not just gonna let go I'm gonna to come to a controlled stop at about this speed. I can uh, turn my brake on, or I wait that long, um, or you know when I get to this speed. And then I'm gonna hold servo, I'm gonna hold the, the stage up or the system up for 150 milliseconds while I wait for the solenoid to kick in for the brake so I don't drop by not servoing. Um, so that's an important feature for come into a controlled stop. Um, just in a software program mode, I can emulate the absolute encoder out and that's all well and good. Um, got some data for the motor, eight pole, uh, resistance inductance, back EMF constant. I just snagged that from the torque constant given the torque and the current. Um, and that's, a, I think that's an estimated value but uh, converting back to the vacuum at 12 volts per kRPM. So I could theoretically go 4,000, but the literature said 3,000 is the speed for the ball screw. So I, I'll, I'll not exceed that by much of anything. Uh, I set the safety limit to 3,300. So just over, you know, just for a little bit of overshoot. Um, anyways, the drive is disabled, so it's holding position. So what happens when I hook up uh, all this mass here? Um, okay, so you can see the, the mass when I let go, it starts to turn. So mechanically, uh, the ball would be in place. And, and this is just due to the 
gravitational effect and the ball screw uh, rotating itself down. The, the, the screw itself is not turning, it's just, just the balls. And again, uh, Einstein's uh, you know, theory of relativity, space time. Um, I'm going to do a move uh, and enable the drive. And you can see with the brake, the current's zero. There's no holding. Um, let's see if we can move up and down on odonomy. So we moved to up down, reading trace data. And uh, you can see now that we're enabled, uh, we're holding against gravity uh, with one amp of current on the control panel. And uh, we can see the effect of what happened here. So before the move was done, the drive was enabled. And you can see as soon as you let go of the brake, the servo has to catch, right? So some, some current will build up uh, to compensate for gravity. And the following error comes back down from, you know, uh, maybe 10 counts of error. Um, and then it's servoing, holding position. Um, let's take that off for a minute here and take a look at what we got here. So we just did an S-curve move and we didn't go too very fast here. I only hit about 600 RPM. This can do 3000, of course. The current uh, while you're accelerating against gravity goes up 1.8 amps. Um, and then it turns around and goes the other way. So it settles into count zero. And then when it drops, you get a little regen and the current goes uh, near zero, maybe, maybe a little bit less positive, but still, you know, gravity is always pushing and pulling here. And then it settles again after the, the move back down to zero counts. So um, those are just some of the effects. Let's take a look at the, uh, what's inside here in a little bit more detail. So I've seen this with steppers and a ball screw, uh, a little Thompson stepper here, and uh, that's the construction of a stepper. Um, this is a strober um, construction uh, with integral ball. And you know this this shaft, this motor shaft has the magnets on it, and then there's coils around it for the for the servo motor. Uh, the motor actually today that we're using is a Panasonic, and uh, I got that from our friends at Olympus. Um, you can see how to hook up the, uh, the wiring here, red, pink for battery, minus plus shield, goes to the drive violet and um, uh, sky blue is for the data communicating to the encoder and then zero to five volts. Uh, we got two wires for the brake, 24 volt brake and a UVW and a, and a earth. And uh, you can see this uh, dimension here for this uh, THK style bearing um, and, the, and the ball screw. Um, just to get a basic idea of what's going on. So the, the recirculating balls here and uh, there'll be a, a distance for the, for the pitch. This pitch is four millimeters. I got 8192 counts per rev. Divide four by millimeters by 8192. It's about 0.5 microns of resolution. This is these are considered higher speed ball screws. Uh, some have bigger pitches. It's a low noise, long maintenance, uh, free operation THK. Uh, just some basic setup again. Um, the backlash or play. They gave a spec here and they said 0.01 millimeters or less of play, and that's technically that's the backlash and move the decimal point over 10 microns of backlash. It's not from the motor's coupling, it's a, it's a direct drive to the ball. So that's just from the bearing itself, there's a little backlash in it. And you can see the radial load, 20 Newtons, not as high as the thrust. Uh, that's why it went against gravity. So lifting it up and down, 200 Newtons. Um, there's a formula for calculating the, uh, <coughs> radial load position based on its distance away from the center here. So there's some formula for that. That's very nice. 
And again, axial is along the axis and uh, there'll be play. And then there's also some deflection in, in this radial direction. Um, regen has to do with dropping a mass. So the mass times the gravity times the distance is the stored energy. <clears throat> and when you, you know, potential energy is up here and as you drop it, uh, that energy goes somewhere. And uh, I just pulled the ball screw as fast as I could. Uh, I went about 2,500 RPM and I saw the voltage develop to be about uh, 20, 30, close to 40 volts of back EMF. So, so be careful when you drop something, uh, you know, disengage the brake and drop it. You'll generate voltage and too much voltage generated could damage some drive. I mean, this, this drive will handle 400 volts or 390 volts or shut down. And the other thing to watch out for in a screw is some, some whipping action and resonances. Uh, it's not a fully loaded system, but we have uh, a closed loop frequency analysis and you can see it's pretty flat gain, rolls off at 100 hertz. I located a pole at 100 hertz because I know it's a ball screw and I don't want to have too much bandwidth there in my velocity loop. So I put a pole there and you can see it's, it's rolling off as we approach the pole. So that's good. And uh, but that's just the, uh, the basic idea. Um, I like uh, Wikipedia because they do a good job of describing, you know, things to look out for for ball screw uh, applications. And uh, there's some C ratings for these ball screws for their accuracy. And, uh, you know, some claim 200 nanometers, but I'm, I have to say, wow, that must be a pretty expensive, accurate uh, ball screw. But the C rating, most precise, um, C10. Anyways, in this uh, in this link here, they have the formulas for the torque and the force and the length, um, which is nice. But they also had a, a paper from the THK. So you can see as you go over a distance, you have some variations in, in the nominal position. So um, this was a, a good paper to talk about the, the THK bearings and their accuracies and in, in mountings. Um, I think the most resolution came from the higher, the higher number, C7. Yeah, so there's, this goes up to C7 and uh, 0.05 millimeters of axial clearance. preload and just a lot of good data here. Uh, yeah, so over 400 millimeter, 4,000 millimeters or less, the high accuracy grades C7 and um, so just some good data for helping to calculate uh, the accuracy with a ball screw. Okay, thanks for watching.